Welcome to the course Visual Merchandising. In this course, you will get an overview of retail display, kiosk and exhibit design. You will also be trained to develop a thematic approach for retail space. This course comprises of five units and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. On completion of this course, students will be able to explain the need for visual merchandising, to review the terminologies in visual merchandising, to recognize the difference between visual merchandising and interior design, to outline the growth of visual merchandising, to review how the changes in formats of visual merchandising came with time and changes in society, to outline the basics of visual design, the elements and principles of design, to create composition using elements and principles of visual design, to apply the knowledge of basics of visual design to space using forms, to visualize space and its look, to examine the play of light and shade, to create the forms and using sunlight to understand how shades and shadows create a look to the visual space. By the end of this unit, students will be able to understand key terminologies in visual merchandising, understand the difference between visual merchandising and interior design. The first module introduces you to visual merchandising. This module explains the need for visual merchandising this module reviews the different terminologies of visual merchandising with regard to layout and design, fixtures and lighting, displays and product placement. There are various types of layouts. This includes straight floor or grid layout, diagonal floor plan, angular floor plan, geometric floor plan, mixed floor plan, and loop layout. Let us now learn about each of them. Straight floor or grid layout, as you can see in the image, has got horizontal or vertical grids and that's how the uh, racks and the shelves are displayed in the store. It is mostly used in clearance sale it is one of the most common floor plan. The next is diagonal floor plan. As you can see the in the image and as the name indicates, they are diagonally arranged. The counters and fixtures are placed along a diagonal. Mostly it is kept at 45 degrees angle for better visibility. Next is the angular floor plan. All the angles generally done in convenience store and it is randomly placed. Next is geometric floor plan. It follows the geometry and it tries to give a space all around so that a consumer can move around and get better visibility of the products. The next is mixed floor plan, also called as a combination floor plan and free flow layout. It encourages browsing. Next and the last one is the loop layout. It is mostly arranged on the edges of the wall and the center is kept vacant or has minimal display units. It is also called as a race course layout. This floor plan is adopted by Peter England stores. As you can see in the image, here departments are on the right and the left to encourage circular movement of a customer. This is mostly seen in discount or in department stores. Now we move on to fixtures and lighting. There are various types of fixtures, conventional metal fixtures, furniture fixtures, found objects, vendor fixtures 
and custom fixtures. So let's go to the first one, conventional metal fixtures. They are also of different types. The first type is a round rack. It is a capacity fixture, which means it can hold large quantity. So this is how a round rack looks. As the name indicates, it's circular with a base like a tripod. And you have the hangers on which the garment is placed. And the garments are placed in an anti-clockwise direction. Now sometimes it is in three levels, the round circular fixture or the round fixture could be in three levels. This is how it looks. The next type of fixtures is T stands, which may be two ways and four ways. Now, two ways could be straight arm and slant arm. T stand, as the name indicates, it's a T stand. And if we have it two ways, then it would probably be on a base something like this. They could be of the same height or the heights could be varying. Next type is a super quads, which is a four armed capacity fixture, something similar to a T stand. And it would have four, four hands on the same base. something like this. The next type is the gondolas. Gondolas are like Roman letter I. So if the Roman letter I is like this, the gondola is figuratively this. You would have the top surface where one could keep things and also the end caps where one could keep things. Sometimes the end caps may be there, sometimes it may not be there. Otherwise, generally we have racks in the gondolas which can be like bins, they can be continuous or they could be broken racks. Sometimes it comes with the slotted angles, so they can be made as per the need. The next type is bins and cubes. Bins and cubes, the only difference is the bins are open on top and the cubes are open on the sides. So it is like this, if it is a bin, then this is how your bin would look. And if you have some umbrellas onto it, or you have some clothes which are onto it, say dupattas and things like that, which could be placed into that. Bins are normally used when there are discounts going on. And the cubes are something what I had shown the previous sketch of the gondolas. They look the same as the gondolas. The next type are furniture fixtures. Now what are furniture fixtures? They are the chairs and the tables that are present in the store. Another type is the found objects. What are found objects? They are the vintage objects or they could be the furniture that are owned by the owner and he brings them into his stores. 
the vendor fixtures the vendor supplies his fixtures for the uniformness so that his uh, merchandise gets a prominent place in the store and the last type of course is the custom fixtures which are made based on the theme so if the designer has uh, his merchandise placed out there then he gives the theme to the visual merchandising team and they come up with custom design fixtures and these fixtures are called as custom fixtures so you have vendors who do these fixtures there is also conventional wall capacity fixture other than the ones on the floor they are garment rods and cross bars slat wall and grid wall okay the garment rods uh, since these are coming on the wall so let's consider this is our wall and you have the garment rods so there would be a rod that's placed but how do we connect the rod to the wall so we have a unit which comes something like this and this would be pegged to your wall so this is how a rod would be there and on which the hangers would take the garment that are being placed on it the other type is a slat wall that's again a wall the difference between the two here you have a rod on which it is placed here you have slats that are already existing on the wall on which you will have brackets or sometimes directly shelves which are placed on which the merchandise can be displayed these are fixtures and props at peter england store which you see in the image the next part of it after the fixtures we are going to move on to lighting lighting is basically of two main types one is ambient lighting another is accent lighting or highlight lighting can best be understood by visuals there are examples of highlight or accent lighting and ambient lighting as you see in the image a highlight created by light as you can see in this visual there is a highlight that has been created towards the ceiling this kind of an ambience can be created in pubs or in restaurants now one should also know that pubs and restaurants also fall into the domain of visual merchandising not just retail spaces and this image shows mannequins highlighted by focus lights now the focus lights can be at the bottom or can be from the top of the mannequin to highlight the mannequin and next visual we will talk about the ambient lighting this image shows ambient light usually used to define in the aisles when you walk into a store you would have seen lights on the aisle or the pathway in which you walk that is called as a ambient light so put together ambient lighting and accent lighting form a highlight of a store and we shall move on to the next part let us look at the displays displays are done on various places on walls or on floor on shelves or on props and fixtures as you can see in this image which is of the peter england store the displays are done on walls as well as on the shelves so the ones on the shelves are on floors and the others are on walls coming to the next image you can see the gondola which is on the floor and you have merchandise displayed on the gondolas 
Moving over to the next part, we have four-way racks, which are again a part of the store. Now, four-way racks can be at the same level or they can be at different levels. When they are placed in different levels, it is important to understand that the pants or the trousers and the heights of the shirts should be taken into account. The trousers should not be placed on a higher gondola or the four-way rack vis vis the shirts. So that's how the arrangement should be done on a four-way rack or if you're doing a tri-level round rack. In this image, we see how a shoe rack has been displayed. Now this can be an island display or it could become a focal point display. Finally, we will look at the importance of placing products strategically that is a combination of the theory learnt so far. These images show various ways in which products are placed in a store. It is called as planogram. A technical drawing of the planogram has been shown. Hence, visual merchandising is not just art, but also science along with human touch. As you can see here, a visual of a planogram inside the store. And the next image is the technical drawing of the planogram, as you can see over here. You have the technical drawing of placements of trousers and of shirts, how they can be put face off or they can be folded and put on the racks. This is the correct arrangement in a planogram. You have reached the end of this unit. To summarize, visual merchandising is silent selling. Interior design is the decor of the store, whereas visual merchandising is more. It is a creative problem solving and can be well explained by a creative thinking model, Scamper, given by Robert Ebris. S stands for substitute. For example, malinquins, which are fully accessorized. C stands for combine, where we combine different range of merchandise, which is called as cross merchandise. A stands for adapt. For example, if you have a step ladder, paint brush and props to display a brightly colored tennis shoes. That is, you show the colors falling off the paint brush and seeping into a tennis shoe which is brightly colored. The M stands for modify or minify or magnify. This is basically increase or decrease in size to create a drama. You either increase it or you decrease it to create the drama. P stands for put to other use. For example, placing a pot on the head with a plain white apron instead of a chef's cap. E stands for eliminate. You eliminate few items from the window. R stands for rearrange, where you rearrange the window. With it being silent selling, increasing sales is the ultimate aim through display and other means and converting footfalls into sales. Thank you.